My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and in today's Everyday Office video, I'm going to demonstrate how using named ranges together with table ranges is really the most effective way of creating dynamic drop-down menus. So as you can see here, I have two columns for managers to be listed, and I have this little list of managers over here on the right side. It makes sense that I would want to be able to put a drop-down menu of these managers into each one of these cells, and we can do that using data validation. Now, one way to make this happen is to click directly onto this set of data and turn it into a table by going to the Insert tab at the top of the screen, choosing Table on the Insert menu, and then clicking OK. Now, I can always use this drop-down menu here for Table Styles to make this look like whatever I want it to look like, and I can always remove the Filter drop-down menu by deselecting the Filter button checkbox right there. Uh, but I'll take a moment here and I will give this table a name. Click into that name box on the design tab. I'm just going to call this TBL MGRS, for example. So table managers is the name of that table. Now, in previous exercises, this is the course that I've taken. I highlight all the cells for on-site manager here. Use the data tab at the top of the screen and then choose Data Validation, this Data Validation button in the Data Tools group to allow for this to be set to not any value, but on the drop-down menu here, you'll notice that List is one of your possible options. Now with List, you could highlight from cell G4 down to cell G7 or 8 or whatever it is for all of those managers. But the problem is that if I cut this down, if Mendoza left, for example, and I wanted to only have three managers in this list, the drop-down menu would not be flexible to only accommodate the three entries. And if I hired a new manager and now there were five entries, again, it would not be flexible to accommodate that new entry. So I'd like to use the table reference. To do this, I can use equal sign indirect open the parentheses, and then in quotation marks put in TBL MGRS, close quotation marks, close parentheses. So you can see there the table managers that I created previously can be used as the source for a drop-down menu, but notice here that to do this I have to use the indirect function. That's because the data validation functionality uh, does not acknowledge the fact that there is a thing called a table in Excel because the thing called tables is sort of brand new in the greater scheme of things. It's the last three versions of Excel that have had this. So I click OK and you can see that in fact, yes, this drop down menu does accommodate Mendoza and Reynolds. And if I come over here and I say we hired a new person named Adams, comma S, you can see there that the table grows to accommodate S Adams. And now the drop down menu also has S Adams in it, which is fantastic. The only problem with this is that the indirect function um, is what we call a volatile function. It's constantly being recalculated, and so in really big spreadsheets, this can cause a problem. Typically, I'm not faced with really huge, obnoxious spreadsheets. I typically have these sort of one-off solutions, so I don't really have to worry about that that much. But recently, I've had a few clients who have had really big spreadsheets, and anything that slows down the process Processing of that spreadsheet can be a real hassle. So using the indirect function to be able to reference that table is a step that we don't want to have to take. So instead, watch what we can do here. I'm going to highlight G4 down to G8, all the entries underneath managers right here. And I'm going to go to my formulas tab at the top of the screen. Now, when I come up here and I go in and tell it to create this from the selection, you'll see that it says uh, the names uh, for the value comes from the top row. Go ahead and hit OK there. Now, when I go up here to the name manager, I'm going to click on to name manager. And uh, 
So what I'll do is I'll highlight from cell G4 down to cell G8, all of those managers right there. Then go to the Formulas tab up at the top of the screen and click on to Name Manager. Now when I click on the Name Manager, you'll see here that I can create a new name right here by clicking on New. And notice what it does right here. It says the named range that you're about to create. Let's it's called Harris R. Let's call it uh, let's call it Manager List. Okay. Now notice right down here it says it's not referring the cells G4 through G8, but rather it's referring to the table called Table Managers and specifically the column of people called Managers. And so when I click OK right here, now I have a named range that refers directly to the table, but it now doesn't require using the indirect function because named ranges have been around since the dawn of time, basically. So let's try that exact same process for the on call manager here in the D column. I'll go to the Data tab at the top of the screen, click on to Data Validation, Again, allow not any value but a list. And in the source box right here, uh, when I tap the F3 key on the keyboard, so the F3 key on the keyboard, notice a manager list is a named range that I can choose. Notice table managers was not a named range that I could choose, but now this named range that I created called manager list that's based on the table is something I can choose. I can hit OK here and simply refer to that named range for the source of the data validation. So then I click OK, and as you can see here on the drop down menu, there's Harris and Mendoza and Adams. And I didn't have to use the indirect function to make this happen. By not forcing myself to use the indirect function, it allows me to cut out that volatility and the extra processing that's required as part of that.